Hello lovely friends, here's a sneak peek of today's Dragonfly mixed media painting. Thank you so much to Travelling Tramps and Simply Nanette. You are such wonderful supporters. Thank you for being my members. So today's Dragonfly mixed media painting was inspired when Kim and I were doing some wonderful collaborations together. We wanted Tasleem on today as our special guest and mixed media queen. So we all got together and we had no idea what the other one was going to create. So I chose some colours, dotted them all around the canvas and went freestyle for an explosion of colour with my fingers and palette. To hear the colours that I use today, and this is sped up quite a lot throughout because it was a really long process. It was about four hours and I haven't spent this long on this type of piece before. So excuse the speeding up, but I will show every stage of the process. I can't wait to see what Taslima has created today as our special guest. And I can't wait to see what Kim's created today. She has just changed her name of her channel to Kim's Art Alchemy. So if you haven't seen that, she's been going now for two weeks under that name. Please do go and subscribe to both their channels. They're amazing artists lovely friends and real creative inspirations. So as I start to use my finger here, I'm blending all of the different colors. And it's amazing how these really high pigmented, beautiful colors and quality paints are mixing together. I've not used my finger in this way with a painting, but I really wanted to do it freestyle. It's very different from my other paintings, which tend to be fluid art. This is pure acrylic. There's no medium added whatsoever. And I'm really enjoying the sensation of my finger on the canvas and I try a palette knife as well to do some of the blending. So really enjoying the colours mixing together. I've got some beautiful teals and blues and pink and there's some metallics in there and some iridescence. So I've got iridescent gold I've got metallic pink, for example, and I'm just intuitively going up and down the canvas in a really smooth action. I wanted to try the palette knife to see what would happen, but I ended up coming back and using my finger and I use my finger to color in the sides as well. And I'll definitely be doing that again. There's nothing better than finger painting, especially when the blending works so well. It's a fantastic little technique I've picked up. So I've got some tracing paper. This is the first time I've used tracing paper in my adult life. And I started to create a dragonfly. I wanted to make sure it was really in proportion to the canvas. So I made sure that I measured it up against the canvas. And I use my rubber to rub out so much because I'm very, very fussy. And just ended up just drawing the dragonfly that I thought was quite good. It's funny actually because I, I thought it looked like a bit of an aeroplane or one of those sycamores that you throw in the air and it spins around what it looks like when it's in the air. <laughs> what do you think? So I was using my pencil and I created my dragonfly and then I went outside once the canvas was dried and I used my spray paint to create drips. I noticed that because I'd used my finger to do the blending up and down. Can you see the drips going off because there's a slight texture already? Now I want this to be a textured piece but I also didn't realise what was going to happen here. So I thought right keep going with it, keep going with it. Can you see my doggy in the background there? I had to move because she was out as I was spraying. She settled down so I had to go and move her before carrying on with the spray paint. I just want to say too please do wear a mask even if you're outside you don't you want to protect your lungs so I ended up erasing some of the drips that are going off down a, a, a different road but I thought I'd leave these drips because I was quite enjoying them being disjointed and off course a bit after all drips aren't perfect it's all part of nature and experimentation so really enjoying this and then I used my pearl pink which is a lovely glossy Pebio spray paint. So just a couple of facts about dragonflies and why today 
I just love dragonflies. They've been something I've always marveled at in my life. And just thinking about the iridescence, I thought they'd be an amazing creature to use for a texture piece. I really wanted to create a dragonfly using a mix of acrylic paint, modeling paste, polyfiller, sea glass, using a glue gun, and just a whole lot of creativity and freedom. Now this is experimentation. You'll probably see a bit later on that I had to leave the modeling paste a little bit longer than I did the polyfiller. But I wanted to try both of them just to experiment and see how thick the lines were. Later on, you'll see what I learned from that. So this is a complete experiment today and you know how much I love experimenting. So I got my titanium white and I mixed it in with both the modeling paste and the polyfiller. I mixed it in, mixed it in and then waited for it to dry a little bit. The polyfiller, as you probably imagined, was a bit thicker, a bit harder and it took less time to harden up. So I got my icing bags and I filled them with the modeling paste in one and the polyfiller in the other one. I just used the tiniest snip of the nib of it just to create a tiny line. Can you see how thin that line is? And I thought with the other one, I'd make it very slightly thicker, a slightly thicker line. This again was an experiment. I've never used these before, but I'm definitely gonna use them again. They're sat there in the cupboard. I'm not icing many cakes. So I thought, let's bring them out and use them for this project today. So I was really pleased with that. And I thought, okay, let's get my glue gun out as well and do a bit of experiment and see how thick the lines would be with that. So I put my glue in and I tried a few lines and I actually really enjoyed it. Haven't used the glue gun before in this way. I've only ever used it to glue shells on a mirror. Later on, I'll show you exactly what happened to the bits that I used from the glue gun. But for now, let's just use all the little bits that I collected. This here is from Eco Packaging. It's creating a lovely pattern. And then my little stencils, which are all mandala stencils, I used randomly to create patterns up and down the canvas. I didn't want to put too much on the outside because I wanted the dragonfly to be the star of the show. So I'm using all the colors that I intuitively fancied. There's that beautiful teal by Golden. Oh, I love that color. I'm using my flat palette knife just to spread the paint into the stencil. And then just going around and should be using it. And as I was creating this piece, I was just thinking about the ability of some dragonflies to blend into their environment through mimicry and how this can inspire the use of different materials and textures. They're color palette when you're creating a dragonfly it's just so diverse depending on where you see them. things i've had these stencils for a long time haven't used them for other things as yet so it was so great that i got to use them dragonflies just magical creatures their wings are intricate networks of veins and membranes so i popped the detail as much as i could in it towards the end and the elongated body can be translated into a three-dimensional form using a variety of different materials such as the glue gun and the modeling paste and the polyfiller and of course that sea glass um, so in the end i got my copper mixed it with that lovely metallic pink and then i used my finger and palette knife to gently place it onto the stencil and it had an amazing 3d effect really enjoyed doing that so now I'm using the rule of thirds and I'm placing my tracing paper right in the middle so I can use the tip of a brush just to get that graphite to come off for the whole dragonfly. So here's the rule of thirds. And it felt like a really good idea to place the overlapping parts of the dragonfly onto the canvas on the top section so once i got that all traced off onto the canvas i then was able to use my polyfiller and modeling paste 
to draw the lines and this is creating more texture so I'm going to be filling in the wings and the body with the rest of the modelling paste and the polyfiller as you can see. Now rather than doing the veins afterwards I made it really textured in a veiny sort of way now so I can just paint on top of it and then varnish it. So exciting I got my sea glass and those of you who have been on some of my sea walks with me have seen me collect sea glass and I intricately got my tweezers and placed all of the sea glass all the way down while the modelling paste was still quite wet. I used the polyfiller to make it more textured because that was harder and I used the modelling paste in the wings and the body. Now then guess where I got the legs from? This was left over from my demo with the glue gun at the beginning and they made fantastic legs so I got 3D legs out of this. I've never done this before and it was a complete experiment. In fact this whole thing is an experiment. So I hope you're enjoying it as we go along on this journey. I literally got the scissors to cut off and shape the feet. And I noticed, marvelling at it, that it had a very, very slightly jagged natural appearance like the leg of an insect. So that was a really exciting find. So I attached them to the dragonfly and really, really loved it. There we are. What do you think of the legs? So now I got my glue gun and I wanted to do some filling in and then I got my paintbrush and decided to do my shading. So I'm using darker colours on the outside and a bit of purple which is created with the pink and the Amsterdam blue, bluish green. Really enjoying the shading in this butterfly. At this stage I was thinking I haven't actually shaded or painted on top of texture before I had no idea how it's going to turn out and I wanted to look at the different colours of one of the English dragonflies and they were very the emperor is very blue and very green so I thought oh I'm going to do mostly green on the body and I'm deciding how I'm going to colour it all in shade it I was just going intuitively with the colours and using a rag just to blend it in a little bit then I used some light blue and some greens and I decided to use a bit of titanium white just to flick around and then leaving it to dry in between the layers and using my golden to do a lovely sheen around the outside. So I hope you've enjoyed this process today. I really enjoyed this mixed media piece. It's been such a fun project. It's taken me forever to do it and I've enjoyed every single minute along the way. I'd love to know what colours you'd use on your dragonfly, what you think of the different textures today and the different approaches I've used. Please do go and check out the wonderful AB Creative, you'll be truly inspired when you do. And please check out my wonderful friends Kim and Taslima's channels. Both Kim and Taslima are a real inspiration. I've got their details in the description below. Thank you for being our special guest today, Taslima, Mixed Media Queen. Every piece of art you do is a piece of you. If you've seen Michelle from Royal River Art, she has a dragonfly as her emblem. She's amazing creative. Please check out her channel too. Keep on shining. Thank you for being here and I hope to see you soon. Bye.